Gina both proved that diversity is the key to the future of film and to success in media and makes Hollywood a better place. Uh, between, the, between the two of them, they have three Emmys. And my dress is unzipping itself. Hold on. It's getting so excited. My dress is very excited about the Latina flavor Latina moment. as I come to the stage. Um, uh, Christina, you are here with a movie that you actually produced and directed that is phenomenal. A documentary Thank you. Thank you. called Science Fair. And apparently you're a big science geek turned filmmaker, so we're gonna talk all about that. Exactly, yeah. um, and, uh, and it premiered at Sundance and is playing here. Yes. Robin and I met on a women in film panel that was phenomenal at Dell, actually, at Sundance. Uh -huh. You're co-president of Latin Media Ventures, which is, I believe, the biggest company for acculturated women in the, in the Latin, Latina women mm -hmm. in the world. And also you're always on shows defining what culture is. So welcome to We Talk. Thank you. Yeah, um, so, so let's start with, with you, Christina. Um, so this, you attended Yale. I did. My like alma you. mater. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. Um, and you were a science fair nerd. I was. Placing fourth, I believe. Yeah, you have all the information. <laughs> okay, yeah. in the International Science Fair. That's right. Which, I don't know if you guys are thinking science fair and some kind of like, oh, science fair with the cardboard. There are the cardboard little pop. But it's high stakes. We're talking yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. In the, have, you, have you seen any of Christina's movie yet? Um, I have, and it's oh. amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I think we have a trailer. Do we have a trailer? Let's, let's, let's take a look, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. The winner in the category of medicine and <laughs> I won the big prize. Dude, I don't know what I do. I really don't. You have like universities making deals with each other, like, oh, he can spend half of his time at Harvard and then we'll fly him over to Yale for, for the afternoon. The school mainly focuses on athletics, but we're not very good at them. Can you guys talk about your recent record? Well, we went 0 and 9 last year. I feel Hollywood. Ela tem um sonho realmente de sair, de crescer. E eu acredito que se eles ganharem, as portas talvez não se abrir. Welcome to Los Angeles! I see so many kids with such fantastic work that just can't get the point across to a judge. Uh, I'm trying to bring here. I know how to communicate ideas. That's really why I win. He programmed his calculator to generate Shakespearean insults, like thou art an unwashed puttock. They can't stop us anymore. We're gonna win this. Okay. All right, I'm Ryan Foles, and we're gonna go meet some ladies. The better you are at science fair, the worse you are at dancing. It was quite lit to be yeah. a science fair party. Yeah. <laughs> Today is the day to get it right. You know what I expect you to do. Just do it. I threw up a little bit. My vision was starting to get a little blurry, and then I fainted. Everybody here has the potential to change the world. It's just about how they spin it, and if they spin it well, anyone can win. Winning will change your life in ways that you don't even comprehend. We're gonna get judged for what, like six hours today? I don't know. Thank you. It's really a lot of fun. Um, after South By, is there somewhere we're gonna, everybody's gonna be able to see the whole movie? Um, you know, we're still, we ha we're still working on distribution stuff, but hopefully soon we'll be able to t tell people. But yeah, um, yeah it's, um, we're gonna be doing the festival circuit for a bit longer, so it will be, all over. Um, and which is appropriate considering how you filmed this. You were all over the place. You're yeah. in Germany. Yes. Uh, did you back reverse and you went in Brazil? Yeah, some of 
some of it we reverse engineered. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, most of it we we just um, chose, scouted. Right? Hunt, yeah. You just chose the winners somehow or something. <laughs> I mean, you chose people who had incredible projects too. Yeah. Um, that first kid, mm -hmm. he invented a test for pancreatic and lung cancer that's three cents and takes yeah. five minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's Jack and Draca. He's so brilliant. He's a, a junior at Stanford now. I think he's a double or a triple major or something uh, like that. He has three patents uh, that are pending, and he's on the Olympic kayaking team. So he's like just, I mean, a real slacker. And then you have that, that woman on Jolly who is so... She's great. She really is. I mean, she's kind of, uh, she's a little bit intense. I mean, she's very intense. Yeah. And, uh, and, and very... I, she has no filters with you. Yeah. You really gained her trust in a fantastic way. Yes, yeah, she's amazing. She's kind of, in my mind, the archetype of what science fair kids are typically like. Very intense, type A, uh, stop at nothing. Uh, Scored a perfect score on her ACT at 13 years old? Yes, yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, totally and she's good. just blatant. She's just like, people are jealous of me. Yeah. <laughs> All over the place, and uh, but you can tell she also has that you know that teen insecurity, and it's that balance, and that's kind of I think where the sweet spot of your film lies, Thank you know, in capturing that vulnerability of these people who are incredible, Thank and they're you know they're incredible. But the the woman from South Dakota, will you tell us about her? Sure. Yeah, Kashfia is uh, one of the only Muslim girls in her huge South Dakota high school, um, and her. High school is obsessed with football, uh, but they're not very good at it. So they've lost every game. W when we uh, went to go see them, they had lost every game for in the prior season. But Kashfia is a science fair, a brilliant science fair champion, and she had placed third internationally a year before we met her. And they'd never made an announcement about her. They'd never, nobody knew who she was. Um, and so she has no support system. They have no science labs in her school. So she goes to the head football coach, who is uh, very supportive of her, has, knows nothing about science, but um, they have this kind of unlikely friendship. And he agrees to sign all of her science papers that she needs signs. signs. So that's... Um, Kashvia is incredible. Just she's out there by herself doing and it. She's developed a, a, a device. She says that all of her, I mean, I guess it's South Dakota, and they don't have anything to do but go drink, and the kids are kind of drunk, drugging and drinking. Yeah. And so she develops a system to measure their their yeah. psychological state, right? Yeah, Tell it's a, a test that um, basically um, deals with risky behavior, and she she proves some very interesting social science about why um, how you become desensitized to risk taking after repeated exposures. But uh, and uh, spoiler alert, but she does very well. So we we're so excited. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> I mean, I knew, but yeah, she's. But I, I mean, I guess that that can really that can really impact the future of medicine. I mean, some of these yeah. people are, are coming up with things that impact our entire culture, yeah. these kids. Amazing. And I had no idea. What was your invention that you got fourth place for? Uh, mine was, um, I was also in social science and I developed a test that measured individual susceptibility to peer pressure and, and conformity. And so I was very interested in people. I thought I wanted to study sociology and become, a, it just turns out I'm interested in people. So. Turns out <laughs> yeah. you're a doc filmmaker. I'm a doc filmmaker, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and Robin, tell us about how rare it is to have a woman like Christina sitting on this stage. You threw out some stats at Sundance yeah. that blew my mind. Well, you know, it's insanely, um, it's insanely rare, unfortunately, as we know, you know, there's so many stories to be told in America, right? So I work um, and I run an organization that focuses primarily on, primarily on Latinas. And it's always been our mission to tell the stories that were not being told. And so when I went to Sundance and met these ladies, I talked about how basically one in four tickets, movie tickets in America, are purchased by Latinos. We're huge movie-going people, right? So literally, you could say that we're holding up the movie industry, um, but so say 25%, right? That we're only represent about 4% on screen which is crazy. So literally, just you just don't see enough Latino stories, enough people that look like you. And so that affects the psyche of a young Latino or Latina, right? Because you're not, the stories are not being told, or if they're told, they're just simple stories. You can only have like three types of stories that can be told a lot of times, right? There's an identity story, it's a struggle story, um, 
And, but that's not commensurate to our experience. I mean, she is an amazing Yale graduate, science fair nerd, and like, why can't that story be told? Um, and so here at Latina, we decided, you know, what Hollywood will not do, we're gonna just do for ourselves. Um, and so we launched at Sundance this thing called the Latina Story Lab. And so we're looking, we're doing a call out for the next gen of, we're calling Latinx talent, because um, it's not just Latinas and, you know, however you identify, um, just to look for just better stories, more stories, because everybody has a story to tell. And we're all better through stories, because I believe storytelling really is what leads to connection and understanding. I think we're at a big disconnect. Um, um, right now in this country, and that's a big different conversation, a different panel, um, but I think it's very much to support storytellers. We talked about, you know, she's like, I need distribution. You know, we've talked about, you know, you create something with your phone, but where is it going to get distributed? And so, you know, we have a platform, we're taking matters into our own hands, you can distribute it through us and we'll help you out, but very much I'm, I want action, I think we're at a time for action, I think everybody now feels that, um, and if I'm in a place to do something, we're going to do it. So what is the platform and how do people find? Exactly. So if you go to latina.com backslash Latina Story Lab, um, there's a call out where we're looking for, again, next gen. It could be shorts. It could be podcasting. Um, we're going to be choosing some that we could actually incubate and then mentor. We're creating a celebrity advisory panel. Um, and then we're going to actually incubate them, fund them, get them done. And then... We're gonna, um, the idea is to premiere them at a festival in the fall. And then if we could bring it back to Sundance where we all met um, at a Latina house, then we could talk about Latina stories. And so it's very much just, before we used to just be spotlighters and you know, sort of shining a light, but we wanna take a more active role because I think right now society's calling for action. Um, and so really whatever we can do to kind of not only inspire you, but help you actually develop and distribute, we're gonna do it. Did you feel that, that, that there was something, you know, ever blocking you or that it was hard for you to find role models as a young Latina filmmaker or coming up? Well, there are just very few. I mean, there's the so few Latina filmmakers um, that it's, there are not that many, you know, role models to look up to. I mean, there are, but like, it, it, as a percentage of how, uh, of our population, there should be, you know, Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds more. Um, Andy, I'm sorry, you had talked about that. When we were on a panel together, there was a study that was done where over the last, the, the highest grossing films, I think, over like the last 10 years, a small percentage were made by women. Do you, do you remember this on our panel? Yeah. Uh, and then out of, say, say the top grossing films. It was like films, one, one out, Latina. Out of those top grossing films in the last 10 years, like a very small percentage, maybe, and I'm making this up, is 20% are women. There's one Latina filmmaker, one. And it's like 11%. I think it's yeah, 11%. I mean, which is crazy. It's not commensurate. So it's sort of like, it's not commensurate to the population. It's not commensurate to the, the stories. And so I'll take it back to you. But that's yeah. the point. There was, one, yeah. there was one to look up to. Yeah. Uh, I remember Here seeing she is. real women. <laughs> Here is the one Latina filmmaker. Here she is. <laughs> uh, I remember seeing real women have curves and being like, wow, that is totally different than anything, than any other depiction I've seen of like Latina women because she was a complex character and... Um, you know, uh, so f for me, growing up, that was the one movie that sticks with me. And then when Ugly Betty, I mean, it's all America Ferrera, but <laughs> when Ugly Betty came on TV, that was totally radical for me, totally different than how Latinas had been depicted um, as a complex character, as you were just saying. So, uh, but, you know, the good news for us is there's a ton of stories out there that aren't being told because... Um, because there are so few Latinos in film. And so for me, that's an interesting opportunity. There's yeah. so many, so many, so many good stories that would be d done a million times if there were more Latins in, in movies. For both of you, what does it take? You know, what does it really take? If you don't have those role models out there, and I think probably there's similar personality traits that you need to kind of grow in yourself um, and reach down to dig into to succeed both in the science fair circuit as a kid and then as a filmmaker to get your film made and for you to come up, I mean, I, I'm not even sure that we even got into how you came to be who you are and to start this company. Um, so if, you know, take it, run with it. Well, I, no, I, I think building your own system is like, like you said, is, um, is something that we have to do. And, and now there are, I feel that there are people who are interested in, in stories and, you know, maybe now more than ever, people are, look, are realizing that um, Latino audiences are huge and they show up to movies and they buy tickets in a way that, you know, white audiences don't. Um, and so I, I think there are new avenues for me personally um, that I didn't quite know existed, but um, 
I think building our own, your own system like you're doing is pretty inspirational. I mean, I would say, I feel like I've done three things, right, to maybe get where I am today. One of, is, one of them is trust the value of my own experience. And I think, and that's about believing in your own story, right? So whether it's a good story or it could be a bad story, a lot of times, even my own story is like, there's things I could be ashamed about, like if I have, you know, like I have family members that have been incarcerated or things like that, and that could seemingly be shameful, but that's just part of my that's part of my story, and that's something I could share with people, right? People can identify truth. Truth sees truth, right? Heart sees heart. So I think everyone has to, for me, I've, I've valued my experience. Um, and the next thing is, yeah, I've created the framework. And, you know, Latinas start businesses at six times the rate as non-Latinas, right? So we're very entrepreneurial, insanely entrepreneurial, because I think we know... We, we hustle, we know how to work hard, and we can see the possibility of what could be, right? And I think lastly, it's the power of network. I very much believe in community um, and conversation. And so I have a big community. I think that Latina is a community. I mean, obviously, it's called Latina. It's not called like Robin, you know what I mean? And so it's very much like about community because it's like we have to support each other. And I think, the, you know, being able to trust my story, being able to believe that I could do it and have a vision, even though it's sort of a blank slate, and to be able to call on community to support has, has been helpful. And did you grow up here? I grew up in San Antonio. And, and what, would, I mean, what did you do at first? Like, how did you say, okay, here's what I'm gonna do? Well, it's interesting, and my, my story is different, which is why I want to tell all the stories, right? Like, you know, there is about, I always say, like, there's 27 million Latinas in the country, and there's 27 million ways to be Latina, white, black, acculturated, immigrant story, you know, Spanish-speaking, non-Spanish-speaking. My Spanish is, like, highly mediocre. Um, because I was, I've been here for a long time. My parents were born here. But I've always, I think, very much, and this is women. This is also just, like, women and men, you know. very I was the first, a lot of times, like, I was the first in my family to, like, go to college. And I went from, I went to UT Austin, which was so far away <laughs> from San Antonio. My parents were like, why are you leaving? I'm like, I'm going one hour away. <laughs> but this was, like, revolutionary. And then when I moved to New York, that was, like, heresy. Like, where are you going and why are you doing this? Um, but I think very much this belief and wanting to see things that were bigger can drive you. Um, but it's been sort of like a trailblazer. you got to blaze trails wherever you are, you know? It's Especially hard also to take risks. I mean, I think for, for parents that have are hard, you know, they've raised their kids and it's a hard-fought life to put the food on the table to make sure that the mortgage is paid, to then see, or the rent is paid, to then see your child just go, you know, I'm going to go be a filmmaker yeah. or I'm going to go to New York. And it's like, wait, what about being a doctor or a lawyer? I thought, you know, so I'm sure you come up against that too a little bit. Yeah, I think my, my, my dad, you know, I went to Yale and it was like my brother and I were supposed to be doctors. And, and then, you know, we both changed course and I think they finally get it now that we're, that like we were at Sundance. I feel like they're, they're like, all right, my filmmaking helped. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that legitimized it. What was that like? This is uh, your first film Oh my God, Sundance, it's crazy. Right? Yeah, we thought there was not no chance of getting into Sundance. We thought like we had totally discounted the possibility of getting into Sundance. And so um, just getting in was uh, hu huge. I mean, I don't think we even understood that we were in for, <laughs> for a few like hours. We had to call back and clarify. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. It, uh, and then we found out that we won the Festival Favorite Award, which was the first inaugural overall um, audience award. And so that was totally, uh, that was surreal. Um, the two head programmers called me and they asked me how I was feeling. And I said, great. And I thought, oh, this is so, so nice of them just to call and check in with every filmmaker. I thought that it was just like a routine call. I don't know if I ever got that call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they ever called me to check in. Yeah, no, and then we found out we won and it's been, it's been totally unreal. Just, the, just way beyond our expectations for the movie. Um, and, and the movie, as it unfolded, got more and more, probably more and more complicated because yeah. it, what happens when you're making a documentary is that one thing leads to five more. Yeah. Right? And then you have to trust your instincts and hone your instincts to really figure out which way you're going to go. It's like right. choose your own adventure book or something, right? Totally. So how did you do that? I mean, you found yeah. this Serena McCullough. Yeah, I, that's, she's actually a great example. We were looking for, uh, you know, a lot of students. We thought this would be kind of in the model of Spellbound, if you've seen that, which is about spelling, the spelling bee. Uh, it's an amazing movie. Uh, but we thought we'd be following all kids. And I kept being drawn back to this one teacher, Dr. Serena McCullough, who's from Long Island. She has the most winning science fair team in the world. Um, she has a team of immigrant 
children, um, all Asian, and she's a black woman, and she is just incredible on camera. And so I kept trying to find which student of hers I wanted to follow. And during the week of the science fair, we made kind of a last minute decision that she was our character. And it, we had spent so long trying to cast kids. And so we just totally had to go trust our instincts, as you were saying. And, and um, yeah, and totally change directions and break the model that we had thought was our model. So, um, yeah, we, it, improvising is very important. And we had a tiny, tiny team, so that was very easy to do, to change directions. So. You, gave, you, you, you bring up, and this will be probably her final question, but you bring up something really interesting, which is she says to you that she gave up everything for this, right? And you actually see that she doesn't have a life, like, outside of it at all. This is it. These are her kids. Um, and I think that's always been a question as women yeah. pursuing our careers. You know, do you put your eggs on ice? Like, what do you do? I got, I happened to get pregnant mm -hmm. right before, I mean, when I was finishing Dig, my movie Dig. Yeah. And I ended up having, giving birth to the baby in the movie at the same week, actually. Mm -hmm. So I had no choice. I like went in, my career kind of took off right when I, my motherhood took off. Yeah. But had I not had that happen, which wasn't planned really, had I not had that happen, I don't know that I would have ever felt like it was a good time. Right. So as a young woman yourself, <laughs> and also just filming a lot of... Yeah, yeah, with young women. Yeah, young them. women. And then filming Serena, giving up sort of her life. Yeah, no, it's an interesting, I mean, for for me personally, I'm trying not to think too much, <laughs> too much about it. I think. Uh -oh. <laughs> Whoops! We're on stage. No, no, no. Deeply. Um, but uh, you know, I think you, we do have to think about things. We, we uh, I'm trying to figure out if I can plan my career around babies. I'm married. I want to have babies, but it's a consideration that you know men don't have to go through, and so. Um, I like. I hope you can have it all, as they you say. You can. It's really. It's actually a great way to go. Yeah. You just have to breastfeed as the plane takes off and when it goes down. Yeah. <laughs> um, generally, but I mean, it was just. I, I was just thrown into it. So. Yeah. But uh, do you have children? Yeah, I have two. Okay. They're and has that ever been? I mean, it is a balance for sure. It's yeah. definitely you've yeah, got I this mean, feeling. Always, you always keep your phone on. Yeah. I you mean, know? you know, I. I think very much, and again, this could be like a whole panel, but it's like, I think it's almost redefining success. Like, what is success to you, right? And how, you know, like, can you have it all? And do you want to have it all? You know what I mean? And should you have it all? Or can you have it all at the same time? You know what I mean? Like, maybe you just have like, I'm going to do this here. When I had my kids, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. I stepped out. I didn't work for probably about two years. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'm kind of bored. So then I went back to work with sort of a vengeance. And I, I have a, like an amazing support system. But I think it's a challenge. I think that anytime you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Um, and so I think you always have to think about what am I saying yes to and what am I going to say no to and be able to sit with that. Because I think a lot of times just the saying the no is like you have to sit with Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this amazing movie, but that means I'm not gonna write these five stories, right? Or I'm gonna say yes to this career and my kids, but there's five other things because I just simply can't do them. Um, and so, and I think it's just sort of about prioritizing. But I do think that it's a, it is sort of a female thing in the sense of you know, can we have it all? And I think it's just I don't know. I'm trying to work for it myself. I don't know if I have a complete balance of life, um, but I'm happy, and I sort of just go one day at a time. All right. Well. Um, <laughs> On that note, I think we all have to learn how to say yes, and we all have to learn how to say no. Yeah. It's really interesting when you said that. I was like, God, yeah, because some people really can't say yes and some people can't say no. But you've both said yes to being on We Talk. Thank you for that. It's so fun. Thank, thank you. you. What an thank honor. You. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Very inspirational. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.